Today we're going to be talking about camera movement inside of Blender and how to get a more interesting and appealing shot for your scene. So this is a scene that you saw at the beginning of the video. We're basically going to be trying to recreate this camera, a handheld look inside of Blender and a super easy workflow for that. And then also you can see this empty moving around. This is basically going to act as our focal plane and basically give us a autofocus effect in Blender. Okay, so inside a new project, let's just go ahead and create a super simple scene. So I'm going to go ahead, shift A, add a plane, just going to scale that up. And then we're going to shift A again, add a cylinder, uh, basically to act as like a tree trunk or something like that. And then we can go ahead, hit tab, A, G, uh, Z to move it up on the Z axis and then hold control and click it up one unit. So now that we have uh, the cylinder has a origin point at the bottom. So we can go ahead and S, Z to scale that up. And maybe we want to scale it in S, shift Z and then scale on every axis besides the Z axis. Just so we have a nice kind of like tree trunk shape. Then we can come to our plane and go to the particle settings add a new particle system hair advanced we want to go to the render section we want it to be object and then select our cylinder object and then object rotation we can move the cylinder kind of down here and then out of our scene and then if we just go ahead and rotate it let's see the x-axis 90 degrees we actually need to do the y-axis no we need to do the z-axis so rotate on the z-axis 90 degrees and so now all of them are sticking up. We can come back over here and I want to make the size much bigger. And then I also want to decrease the number just so we have like a nice forest scene. But I'm just going to leave it around like 52. I think that'll give us enough objects to work with. I'm actually going to go ahead and make our camera a vertical format. So if we come up here to the output section, I'm going to copy this uh, 1920 and then type in 1080 and then just paste the 1920 for the Y and then we can go ahead and uh, if you don't already have it set up we can come up to the view section we want to go to navigation and then all the way down to walk navigation if you just right click that you can actually change the shortcut and so I set mine to shift F so whenever I am positioning the camera that is just the button I'm gonna hit okay so shift F let's go to walk navigation and then let's just put it like right here, just facing kind of the side of our force. Now, the thing that we want to do is actually use the walk navigation like I showed you earlier. And we can actually uh, move around the scene realistically. We, using our mouse, we can kind of mimic how a handheld look would look like inside of Blender. And then if we come down here, we'll notice that we have this auto keying button. If we turn that on, basically what that will do is automatically set a keyframe whenever we do anything inside of Blender. So with these two things, we can actually go ahead and animate uh, live with our camera. So you want to make sure that your camera is selected so that we animate on the camera keyframes down here. And then all you want to do is press play, which is space, and then shift F and just kind of like move around your scene. Uh, however you want to uh, you know do the camera movement and you can notice down here it's created keyframes and so that is exactly what we want I'm gonna go ahead and just move this up here select all these and then I'm just gonna move this to the start of our frame range just so it automatically starts playing at frame one okay so coming down here we can set the in frame to be our last keyframe now you'll notice that there are some blanks here, like some keyframes that didn't get recorded, and that's actually because we weren't moving on those keyframes. And so what we actually want to do is come up here, and we want to go to the graph editor. And then you'll notice that we have all this rotation data here. If you actually go to some of them, you can see the Z is actually recorded here as a graph, and so that's really easy to tell kind of how we moved. So what we want to do now is we want to basically fill in those gaps that we had created earlier. I'm going to hit A to select all of our keyframes, and then if we actually hit Shift-Alt-O, uh, it'll actually fill in the keyframes kind of in between keyframes. So now that we have keyframes on every single frame in our animation, You'll notice if I play this animation, it's very rough and very choppy. And in real life footage isn't really like that. It's very smooth since we're pretty good at controlling our hands. And also many phones now have auto stabilization in it. So what we want to do is go ahead and smooth all of that out. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit Alt-O over here. 
I'm just going to click that a uh, little bit. So I click that around like seven or ten times, uh, whatever looks good for you. And what that will do is actually smooth out some of our bumps out here, just trying to make those as smooth as possible. And so doing it about ten times gives us a result that's much smoother and much more realistic. Okay, so if I play this result, you can see that we have a really good camera movement right now, but we're not actually moving in the space. If you, I come out here, you'll notice that the camera is kind of just stationary. And depending on what you want, um, you can actually make it stationary, but I kind of want some movement of my character and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to the very start of the footage I'm gonna make sure the auto keyframe is now set off because I don't want to set any more rotational keyframes I just want to focus on the location of my camera and so what I can do is I'm gonna go hit I for location right here at frame one and so that will basically create a new set of uh, location keyframes and since they're separate from the rotation they won't really affect that side so now that we have a keyframe on frame one, we can come to the end of the footage. I'm just going to keep it super simple. And I'm going to come up here, uh, hit seven to go to the top view. Then I'm just going to G and move my camera, let's say like right here. And then again, since we don't have the auto keyframes on anymore, I need to hit I and make sure I set a location keyframe. And so now we can see our camera starts at frame one right here. And then if we play the animation, he actually moves uh, with the scene and so now we have actual movement with our camera so here's where we're at with our handheld footage you can see it's looking very realistic now and if this is all that you want this is a pretty good result for very fast work uh, what i'm going to do is go ahead and go one step further and kind of add a little bit of randomness to the care movement to make it a little bit more shaky so what i can do is i'm going to come down here i'm going to go to the x rotation uh, just start there and then if you actually come over here if you don't see this window if I just press N to activate that and I'm going to go to the modifiers tab go to add a modifier and I'm going to hit noise and noise will basically just create a bunch of noise you can see up and down uh, on the X rotation now so if I play that you can see it's very very jittery and that's basically just rotating our camera up and down so uh, basically tilting and so what we want to do is we want to dial the strength down a lot and then the scale is way too much it's way too jittery so i'm going to increase that a little bit and so now we have some tilt in our camera and it's very natural looking next let's go to the y rotation and the y rotation we don't need a lot of because that's actually going to be kind of our rotation of the camera and so if i play this with the default values you can see it's shaking a lot so we want to again decrease the strength maybe to a 0.3 and then increase the scale so it's not as jerky and now we just have some you know side to side uh, rotation of our camera now the last one the Z rotation we can do the same thing so you can see right here it's kind of you know again jittering a lot and so we want to set the strength down and then the scale again we can set uh, up as well and then now we can see we have a lot of random deviation and a lot of cool camera movements that we didn't have before so with this result it's looking very realistic i'm just going to go ahead and go into the camera view now since i'm trying to recreate a phone footage look kind of a found footage look i'm going to go ahead and try to set my focal length to a wider lens since most iphones or smartphones in general have wider lenses uh, than film cameras so I'm going to go ahead and set mine to be a 20 or we'll do we'll try to do an 18 millimeter since that's kind of a normal millimeter uh, for a lens. OK, so the final thing that we need to add, uh, if we come to the render view, then I'm just going to add a quick light uh, point. We can just create a point light for now. We come out here and just set that here and then the power way up might increase the radius. And then let's uh, multiply the power by 10, just so we have some light in our scene. Um, and so now what we want to do is actually affect the depth of field, because that is a very important thing to create a realistic camera. And so since I'm kind of looking for more of a horror look, um, you should say, I'm going to go ahead and add a empty plane axis. And we're going to make that be our depth of field. So if I actually come to the camera, I'm going to go to depth of field make that checked i'm going to focus on again our empty that we just created so that's going to be our uh, kind of focus plane 
And then if we come back to the camera, I'm going to make our f-stop be way smaller since that will basically create a shallow depth of field. So now you can see everything uh, further away from the focus plane is a lot blurrier. So the nice thing that we actually did because we have this empty now parented to the focal plane is whenever we move our camera, it's always going to be focused on that empty. And so if we come out here, we can notice that everything is still focused to that empty. So like this right here is always kind of going to be in focus. Um, we can even make it more in focus if we put the empty on top of it. So now, like even when we get closer to this object, you'll notice that it's always in focus and everything else is always uh, out of focus. One thing that you can do and that I did for my scene is actually animate where this empty is. So say I want to start out my clip focused on this tree. And then when we get right here, I actually want to shift the focus to the background. And so what we can do is go ahead and hit I, location. So I'm just basically selecting the empty and I made a location keyframe. So up until this moment, this is going to be in focus. And then at this moment, I want to rack our focus to these trees back here because you can see that they're very blurry right now. So again, I'm just going to hit G, Shift Z. I'm going to move my focus plane over to this tree right now. Uh, and it can be kind of roughly in that area. And again, I'm just going to hit I, location. And so now what that, that has done is if we play this, we can see our uh, focus racks to the tree once we get there. And so if you're trying to create kind of an autofocus look, basically what happens is that if you think of it from a phone perspective, it's going to try to take whatever is in the center of the screen and kind of try to rack our focus to that. And so what I did for my scene before is basically just came at different points. So like right here, I'll notice that this is in the center of our screen. So our autofocus plane should in theory be on that and trying to uh, kind of update to that. And so I just want to hit another location keyframe. Now the thing to keep in mind about cameras is that it takes a little bit to actually have them autofocus to an object. They don't instantly snap to a autofocus object. And so that's actually what gives us a very realistic look is that the autofocus is basically trying to catch up to our scene. And so we always want to have this little focus thing kind of be lagging behind a little bit. And so so maybe sometimes it's like trying to autofocus up here. So I'm going to hit I location. So now let's just play. So you can see that it, you know, tries to catch up. And it just creates a re very realistic look and, you know, a very cool look in my opinion. The final thing that we can do, of course, like any scene inside of Blender, anything you're doing, is add motion blur into the scene. And so if we just come up here and then go to motion blur, we can make the shutter whatever you want. Most cameras try to stick around a 0.5 uh, shutter. And so that is what I'm going to stick to since I don't really want to deviate with that. But depending on the look, you can totally mess with that. And so now if I just right click and then join the areas. So here's the final result that we got. We have a kind of found footage camera look of us moving around. And we were all able to do this inside of Blender using some modifiers and also just using our keyframe camera data that we got. So it made it super easy to get a result that looked really professional in the end. So guys, that is my method to get a realistic camera look inside of Blender. It'd mean a lot to me if you consider liking and subscribing for more Blender content in the future. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you in the next one.